Hi, I'm Canadian artist Roxanne Jervis and I'm starting 36 by 36 canvas. I had a video on how I actually set up my easel so that the easels wouldn't walk while I was trying to paint. I've spent over an hour just painting the edges of this canvas. It's a gallery canvas so the edges are about almost two inches thick and I like to have paint on the outside. The other thing I've done is I've used um, burnt sienna wash to kind of sketch in what I'm going to be painting and from you it looks like a bunch of little funny shaped squares but this is so I know where I'm going to put my work. The other thing I've done is I've taken titanium white and a product called Liquin Impasto and what it does is it helps the white to dry faster. Titanium white if it isn't mixed in with another color ends up taking a long time to dry. In order to speed up the drying, I like to do that. So I put a little bit of the impasto on my blade and picked up some white. And then all I want to do is I want to get the white in where my sky is and pull it down to just cover the canvas where I need to go. As you can see, I'm putting it on, drawing it down as far as I can, and then scraping off the excess paint. Because when you go to paint on top of it, you want your paint to be the paint on the canvas to be thin because the rule for painting generally is fat over lean. Lean amount of paint, thin paint, and then the thicker or fatter paint on top of the thin paint. So you can see this, this does take time. I had one of my students say, please don't speed up the videos quite so much because I can't follow what you're doing. So this part I'll just... David, I'll just uh, go slowly for you. I don't know if you can hear the rain in the background. I have the garage door open because, again, my studio is not really big enough to handle this with the right amount of light on the subject. You see how much paint I can pick up when I go down? So I'm taking off the extra fat paint. See the paint? You don't want to leave any paint on there. You just want to cover the canvas with a smooth surface. So I'm just scraping off the excess titanium white and I'm putting it down below where there's going to be some water and I will end up with a very thin layer of titanium white where the water is. All that does is when I put on the other colors, it's a much smoother way of getting the colors into it and you don't get all of the pocket holes of the canvas. Now I'm just going to put a little extra white where I know there's going to be water. And again, put it on, take it off. Put it on, take it off. So I want my shoreline to um, have a bit of canvas covered. And the best way to do that is to look at it sideways in the light and you can see where the white is. It's a nice crisp white but otherwise it would be a slightly off white canvas. And that makes it a lot easier. Now, the problem I'm having with you doing the big canvas is that I will often be cutting into the wet paint and the big canvas, the paint dries before I can do it, but on the small canvas, this white will allow you to do a lot of things that you can't do on a big canvas. I don't know if you can hear the rain in the background, but I've had to open my garage door um, just to get more light in. Um, it's not that warm out, but I'm managing it. <laughs> Rather relaxing hearing the rain. One of the things with the palette knife is you have to make sure you're using the whole side of the blade when you're doing this. If you press too hard on the heel or too hard on the point, you're going to get scratches into the paint. So you have to actually let that finger rest here and get the full side of the blade. Double check when you're doing it. Feel whether or not that blade is even or whether it's heavy on the one end or the other. If you can get it even, 
you will find your job is a lot easier. I'm just looking for canvas opening areas here. There are a few. smooth with paint so you can use your finger that's why I have these gloves on. What I've done is I've taken a little bit of burnt sienna and um, a cad yellow put them both on my knife where the wet paint is and just brought down some distant color into the hills and then I'm going to cut in just a few trees in here with the side of my blade. Now I'm going to use ultramarine in here just to get some of the shadows and you can see how the colors will change when they touch the wet paint with the blade. Don't mix them too much. Then the rocks, they start with by taking them white. And while this is paint is wet, you get all these lovely shades picking up from the underbrush.
See what I mean about big canvases? They move on you. Now that I have the background in, I'm going to start putting in the where the trees in the foreground are going by using a brush. And basically, because the paint is wet, I can just come right up through the paint with the brush. I had prearranged where these were going to be. One of the things you want to make sure is you don't have your trees evenly spaced, so check my video on picket fence trees. You'll notice from here to here there's that much, but from this edge there's considerably less. The space from here to here is different than the space from here to here. In there I have that much, and there's a little bit more here, so I will be careful to make sure that this tree gets wider on the right side rather than the left side. So that you can see it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> 